Hi, I'm Charles. And I'm Susie. Moman. And we just finished this van build and we're pretty happy with it, aren't we? we are. We've already been using it. And so we're going to do a little van tour. And this is uh, what I call a uh, van made for people who are the average camper who does weekends and maybe a long trip now and then, not for someone necessarily who is on the road all the time, full timers. But I think this could work for full timers as well. But that's always been my focus. Thanks for watching. When we decided to do the van build, we wanted it to be open and airy, light, and simple. And I think we accomplished that. This side of the kitchen was designed to be simple. And so we got the cabinets from Home Depot. It had doors that opened out. But I decided I wanted to have um, sliding doors that would makes it much more simple. I put on puck lights in there to make them brighter so I can see what I'm doing. This cabinet has a huge drawer that holds a lot of stuff. And let me show you. Hey, oh, yeah, I have a, the lock on it. The old-fashioned lock. You drill a hole through the side of the cabinet into the side of the drawer, and that's how you lock it. But it's a huge, big drawer. It holds a lot of stuff. For the countertop, I use the laminate wood. It's four feet long. I polyurethaned it three times. I routed the edge. I also made a custom cabinet for the microwave. It has a plexiglass um, here to hold it in, but I didn't want to block it in. I thought it would look nicer if it's showing, I guess. Um, it's got a shelf up here. You can, you know, when you're cooking, put stuff up here. And I got this from Hobby Lobby. Uh, you can put your touches of home, pictures of grandkids. I put a little um, vase here to hold my flowers. That's my happy spot. An important part of camping is food. And we have this ice co refrigerator slash freezer, and it's awesome. At first, I thought it was too big. It has a slider. You can slide it out. It's got two positions, but to get to the freezer, you kind of have to push it all the way out. Now, you're not going to be standing here anyway. It's got a lock on it to keep it down when you're driving. Here's the first... Here's the second position. The slider is very nice and then it goes right out of the way where you can walk through. So when we're powering this Iceco BL60D, um, and I'll just add, it does have two compartments and um, Susie uses the biggest area for the freezer and the smaller part for a refrigerator, but you can do vice versa or make it all fridge or all freezer or even just have one side on and the other side off to save power. And so you can power it two ways. Um, you can plug it into a regular outlet. I've got one here. I've got one under underneath there. So if we're on shore power, that's how I run it. Otherwise, while we're driving, I plug this 12 volt into the port up there. And if we are um, camp, camp somewhere or we're at a um, rest area or someplace we're not going to be in the, the, the camper for a while or we're hiking or whatever, I'll plug this into the port here or I'll just bring one of the EcoFlow Eco units right here and just plug it right in and run it while we are not in the van, but I don't want to be draining the car battery. So, uh, simple to use, and boy, does it hold a lot and stays cold. This is the rest of my kitchen. Here I have my sink. This is also a cabinet from Home Depot. It's 24 inch regular cabinet. This one was a 30, 30 inch cabinet. I beefed it up, took the drawer out, took the front off of the drawer and attached it to the cabinet. And I painted it. We actually got these without paint. Um, okay, so for the front, the top is the same as over here, the laminated wood. I um, polyurethaned it three times. And I thought, since you never know if you're going to be on level ground or not, I put this up here to keep things from rolling off. You can put your soap or whatever. I didn't go all the way. Then we jigsawed out a hole for the sink. We got this sink online. It's a... Ruvati. Ruvati. It's very nice. It even has the, um, the head that comes out, which we might use in the shower, which is right next door. And the faucet we actually got from Home Depot. Yes, the faucet we got from Home Depot. It's not hooked up, but it does have a 9-volt pump, 12-volt pump. And uh, Charles will explain about that in a minute. But it's, it's very nice. We're going to put jerry cans underneath. Um, to pump the water out and to drain the water. So um, I really like it. So here we have the Julka. It says 12 volt pump, water in, water out. It's got quick connects. 
and so you can drop um, the hose with a filter into a jerry can or actually even a lake if you want to or a stream with a long cord, a long hose. Here's the shower head. We have a kitchen sink faucet too, but this shower head will be hooked up. So water will be coming from a jerry can underneath. And then we can um, put the shower head up here and take a nice quick rinse shower. And we could also pull this outside to wash off muddy boots or um, hiking uh, poles or whatever. So a uh, nice simple system. And it, this is a pretty quiet 12 volt uh, water pump and uh, if you run out of water, it won't burn up the motor, which is another nice feature. So, uh, just simple plumbing with the quick disconnects. Works great. This is our sleeping area. And when I we first got the van, I started right away building the sleeping boxes. They look like coffins, actually. Um, I tried to decide how wide they would be. I wanted them wide enough if we take lots of naps. To be, just come back here and sleep. If you're driving, stop at a rest area, come back and sleep. I didn't want to have to make and rebake the bed and have a table and change it into a bed and back to a table. I don't want to sleep on a table. So, um, they might be a little bit wide. I could have had them a little less wide and have a little more room to walk here. It's just a tiny bit awkward, but that's fine. So, they end up looking like this. Thank you, Custom Mattress Factory. And um, at first I had the piano hinges, and then we changed that because we can now do it this way. It's more convenient than trying to hold the mattress up the whole time. If the van is leaning that way, the mattress will stay up by itself. Otherwise, you can just move it over, get what you want, and put it back. We hold um, pretty much our camping gear in the back, too. We've got the batteries and stuff. Our blankets and clothing up in the front part. So, everyone wants to know about the bathroom and about taking a shower. Well, we do have a shower in here. So, the shower is in this box right here. And, actually, would you like to... Can you see the shower? What, and what else fits in there? Uh, I've got... Oh, well, we do have... Uh, the um, Our porta potty fits in here. And we have our other things. There's a drain. There's the drain and the shower. And here's our lovely shower made by Explorer Outfitters. Explorer Outfitters. Thank you, Explorer Outfitters. Okay. This is awesome because it each the top is just held up. The corners are held up by a, some kind of bar in there. Mm -hmm. Metal. Uh, you can put it on your hangers. Isn't that cool? You take out the little bit of things that are in there. Okay. And you're completely covered. You have air. We've got our fans to get the fans going. There's actually a light right above it. Um, our shower. Is That's one way. One way is right here. And I'm going to make a hole here with a flap have the water that way. And we also have a hose with the that came with the Julka 12 volt water pump that can reach in there easily and there's a holder that will we can mount on the wall. Right. And since you since I already told you we like simple, the simplest way is to take a little bucket of water in there and pour it on you. And that's what we might also right. do. And so do are we going to have a hot water heater? No. We are not. Right. We're, we mainly just want to rinse off, and if we want, if we we could heat up the wa heat up water with a microwave or um, something else, and then put that in the jerry can. Right. And so it drains it drains down through the the drain that's in there, and tell them how you waterproofed. Uh, waterproof was Flex Seal. I just painted it all around on the boards, and um, it works so far. It's working lovely. And why are there two big bolts there? The two big bolts are holding this cabinet, or one of the things that's holding right. this cabinet in. Yep. See how nicely the shower curtain folds up? You would leave it up until it's dry, or run the fan, or whatever. Yep. Once it's dry, just stick it in there. And we'll just drain the gray water, we'll go into a bucket, and we will yeah. correctly uh, in the appropriate get rid place. of it. Yeah. And I may, still may put in a gray tank. That I just haven't gotten to that point yet. I, I'm going to see if I really need it, and I don't think we will. But we're mainly just rinsing off. We're not right. taking a, a luxurious hot shower. Right. 
because we stop at a Holiday Inn Express sometimes once or twice during a three or four week trip, don't we? Yes, we do. I, I treat my wife nice. <laughs> yes. When you're camping, showers are overrated. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them about what I'm so proud of that you did. The shiplap? Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, he thinks I did a great job on the shiplap, but actually the shiplap did a great job on its own. It just is so pretty. You can't really mess it up. You just stick the boards together in the groove, tongue in grooves, and uh, it is beautiful. Um, I did have issues on the corners because I had nothing to attach it to, but after lots of prayer, <laughs> uh, God helped me to figure out how to do the corners, and I think they turned out very nice. And it was a little tricky up here, but you found a way to make it fit with some custom pieces everywhere. And uh, talk about the windows. The windows, I also had to uh, get some advice from God. <clears throat> YouTube helps, but it doesn't tell every detail and, and for your own situation. So um, <clears throat> I first made, um, made these frames that didn't come out far enough. They had to come out far enough to come flush with the shiplap. And that was a big problem because I didn't. So angrily... I had to make new ones. I made new ones. In fact, I think this I is made your third one. Three, yeah. So finally got them to fit and uh, figured out how to do it. Just measure around the window, make the box. Oh, but the box had to sit on the frame that he put on that I screwed the shiplap into. So it was a little complicated, but anyway, it got done. I made these wooden pieces underneath to fit under the window, so it looks nice and um, then put a frame around it with my brad nailer. So, and then I had to fix all the little gaps. But it turned out great. Thank you. Um, I decided I wanted carpet because I like the looks of it and the feel of it. I don't like the cold, hard metal. Some people do it because of the condensation, but I just did it around the door frames. I did it on the sliding door and around the windows. And what was it like doing that? It was difficult. At first it was very difficult. It's not the easiest thing, so don't judge. <laughs> There's lots of bumps and things to put carpet on, but you did a great job. Thanks. Explorer Outfitter gave us great window covers. They help with the heat and the cold, and it's really good with insulation. But also, um, if we're at a rest park and we want a little bit of privacy, I put these white hooks. I just got them from Walmart up here. And this also helps if it's if you're at a rest park and it's hot and there's a little bit of heat up there and you just want a little bit of cool and you can put this. It helps with heat and also privacy so people can't see in here. Well, let me talk briefly about the outside, what everybody sees. Uh, on the back windows, we did the uh, vinyl, the perforated vinyl. And I tried to do it myself and I was terrible at it. I had to buy it again. had a friend that has a sign company. He took care of all the decals and then he put this on for us and it's just really tricky good luck doing it it's you get this optical illusion kind of effect when you do it but we have found like right now I, I can look through and I can see the the windshield the what's coming through the windshield but other than that you really can't see and if it's very bright and it's sunny you absolutely don't see it in so we really really like this and we know it's going to help with uh, with heat as well on the back here I decided to have a hitch put in so I think it's a curved hitch mainly because I wanted this step, but in case we ever needed to, um, to tow anything, which we don't plan on it since we've sold our runaway, which we were originally were going to uh, be using this, um, the runaway with our camper, but it turns out this completes our needs. So um, we like to put some decals and things on, but that's about it back here. So up on the top, on this end of the roof deck, I've got my Halo View camera and it is wired and runs directly to the monitor um, up front. And then I put two Nylite uh, six inch rectangular uh, LED light bars up there. They are not wired that I can turn them on while driving. So if we were in a situation where um, I wanted to turn those on, what I've got in here, and I'll take a picture and show a still, but what I've got, um, I have wires coming down through, the, through this post into the box and they're wired with a regular cigarette lighter style plug and it, it's there ready for me to plug into 
one of my EcoFlow units. And so that's how I would turn those on because I just can't conceive of a, a reason to have those on out on the road. The, the front ones I could, but um, definitely would never do that. So that's what the purpose is back here. So cutting holes in a van is always a scary thing. Um, and people usually want windows. And um, I'm not sure. I think if I did this another van, which or not, I might just have a pro do this for me, a, a van outfitter. Uh, it was a little nerve-wracking, but I ended up doing it okay. These are the C.R. Lawrence windows. They're wonderful windows. They're bunk, so they, they're, they're awning style, which is great for rain. I wouldn't want the sliders. Um, because of the contour of the transit, <clears throat> so it was a little tricky, at least for us, to get them to really hold in tight. So we put in a little spacer, thin wood on the inside, and then we were able to really get it tight. We put silicone around. Did have So up front, it's pretty simple. Um, I decided to put in a small 12-inch uh, Nylite LED light, and it had a simple little mounting thing. Um, and I actually bought some yellow film that I may put on to turn it into more of a fog light. It is on a switch up there, so I can turn on any time. And we used it recently in a really bad thunderstorm in Georgia. And I just wanted to be seen a little better. And then I added the, I think it's a 42-inch light bar. And again, Nylite. They're not expensive, but they work well. So I've got that up there. And I've got two of the CA-110 side view cameras from Halo View. And I'll show you inside uh, shortly. But those cameras are angled, and so they let me see my blind spots. Um, and they work really well. They really do, especially the blind spot over here. So um, the um, roof rack has a fairing from Flatline Band Company. And, of course, the roof rack is Flatline Band Company. And um, I'll show you up there briefly. But I, we Before I take you up on the roof deck, I do want to mention this Flatline Band Company uh, ladder. Uh, and I've got videos showing how to install it. It's so here we have my roof deck on my Flatline Band Company roof rack. There you see the LED bar. And it uses one, two, three, four footers on both sides. There's 80-20 aluminum going across. And all of these screws show where I've screwed into bars. So I guess we can count them. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine bars up here. I probably did a little overkill. And here you can see the cameras and the lights. Back here we have a Max Air passive vent, and here we have the Max Air 5100K motorized, can blow in, air in or out. I don't have it raised right now, but uh, it works great. And the deck is not only a thing of beauty, it's just fun to use. So there's uh, what's going on up here. I think that so in van builds, people are always wondering about cooking, and especially the bathroom. Do you have a shower? Do you have a toilet? and then solar and I think sometimes solar is people make too big a deal about it because the when I'm talking the average camper the average camper from 50 to 100 percent of the time has shore power so the solar thing is kind of overblown for the average camper now if you're on the road all the time or a full timer or a nomad whatever you want to call um, then I think you probably are going to have to beef up and go after the solar but as you saw inside we don't have a garage with the big solar setup we have found that what people call solar generators, I know it's kind of a dumb term, but the EcoFlow standalone units, they can take care of all your needs for the average camper like us. When we're not at a campground, we're at a Cracker Barrel or a rest area going through Kansas and I-70, we can stop overnight and we're fine. We're also starting to use Harvest Host, and most of them do not offer power, but some do. We can run everything. We're all fine. And um, uh, EcoFlow did give me two, uh, uh, four of their 110 watt panels and so we can set these up so I'll probably normally bring two and I'll have them um, locked in a cabinet or in a bag up on the roof deck uh, I'm not going to uh, right now I don't plan on putting solar panels up there permanently if I do it would be one uh, narrow one uh, in between the uh, LED light up there and the max air fan um, we can set these up I have it wired I've Wires going through a junction box down and to the back. And so if I put these solar panels up there or wherever, then I can plug in and charge our EcoFlows. But they charge so fast that usually if we're going places, uh, I can have them charged and ready when we don't have shore power. But I, I'm set with this, okay? It's just that some people just are obsessed about solar and 
Uh, they're great, but you have to have a lot of panels to, to charge up the big uh, lithiums that are coming out now. And uh, you don't always get optim optimal sun either all day long. So that's something else to consider. So it works great when it works great. Um, so we are using it some, but we're not really dependent on it. So that's just, uh, I know some are wondering about the solar, and some are just shocked that I don't have this full, filled with solar panels, but I'd rather have a deck because we're good on power. We build a I built a superstructure underneath here, uh, mineral wool insulation on the side walls, rigid on the, on the floor and in the ceiling, um, standard 12 volt wiring. It's two wires, a black wire and a red wire, and it uh, wasn't hard to do. Um, dimmers on these six and another dimmer up there in the front, USB panels on both sides of the cabinets, AC outlets on both sides. I have a cord running here and under the wall to get to the outlet over there and then there's one on the other side and with a 30 amp inlet coming in so we are all set to run on shore power or on our EcoFlow lithiums and so in here this is where I keep my uh, batteries and right now I've got a, uh, a River Pro 720 watts and so I can plug in our, all of our 12 volt and it runs everything and if we need to run the microwave or the coffee maker. I've got a Delta Pro over here, which is normally what I would have right here on a trip, and it can run everything. And so I've got two Deltas, a River Pro with the extra battery, and um, the standard, the River uh, Max. And so more than set with power. And uh, you just have to think ahead and even run extra pairs of wires, which I did over here, and I'm glad I did. I would run at least one extra pair on both sides in case something comes up and it'll be easier to get to. So um, that's how this, that's just very quickly how we constructed it, took our time, but uh, we're really pleased with how it's uh, insulated. It's gonna work great in hot or cold weather. And um, for us, we keep saying it's a thing of beauty. Really turned out well. So here's one of my EcoFlow units. It obviously would not be like this. It would be stored below, but I have a cable that plugs in and so I have a fuse block down here where everything is wired into. They're all labeled. You see an AC outlet there as well. So I can run all my 12 volt from a unit here. And then if I need to run the AC outlets for the microwave when we're not on shore power, I take these cords that I've got here. I have two of them, one for each side of the van. And I plug those into, say, the Delta and I can power everything, the microwave, the coffee pot, whatever we need to run. So um, pretty simple system and it, uh, nothing like the big garages you see in a lot of builds, but it works. And here are all the puck lights on and I do have these back six on a dimmer and four up front and they are plenty bright at night, that's for sure. And of course the Max Air fan, we have uh, one that you just turn on by pushing the button up on the unit and that works great for us. And I won't get all detailed here, but I've got a six panel rocker switch controls the monitor and four cameras and the LED lights on the front. And then I added a Sirius XM radio and uh, this is my little electronic headquarters here. Well, there you have our van tour. It was probably too long, but we tend to do that. I know she's thinking <clears throat> that's what Charles does. I did mention we are at the Muscatatuck National Wildlife Refuge. This is the old Myers cabin back here, and we've done a lot of hiking and filming out here. It's a beautiful place. And any final words about our van build? Well, we're just really blessed to be able to do it. Right. We're really excited, and we don't take for granted um, being able to do this. And then also with all the corporate partners that gave us some great stuff that'll be wonderful to have. And so, thanks for watching. <music>